highlights from the first semester of Algebra 2 in two and a half minutes. Let's start by looking at parent functions, and we can do transformations on these functions. We can make vertical changes by multiplying and adding numbers to f of x, and we can make horizontal changes by multiplying or adding numbers to x. We can also reflect over the x-axis or y-axis. And now parabolas. Parabolas are very good at modeling things like objects being thrown in the air. There are four common equations for parabolas, and these are called quadratic equations. They can come in vertex form with an a, vertex form with a 4p, intercept form, or standard form. And depending on which equation you use, you can find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the focus, or the directrix. And we can also find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0, or the x-intercepts by setting y equal to 0. Let's talk more about finding the x-intercepts. So there are typically four ways to solve a quadratic equation when it's set equal to 0. The square roots method, factoring, completing the square, or quadratic formula. In some situations, one method is best. A lot of times you have your choice. A parabola may have two, one, or zero x-intercepts. In the situations where there are zero x-intercepts, we still have solutions to the equations, but they're complex solutions using i, where i squared is equal to negative one, or you can think of it as i is equal to the square root of negative one. When solving these and a negative shows up under the square root, you know the solution will be complex. Polynomial function. All of these are polynomial functions. All of these are not polynomial functions. Polynomial functions have terms with coefficients and whole number exponents being added together. We can add, subtract, multiply, and divide polynomials. The degree of a polynomial is the same as the highest exponent. And the number of zeros or roots or x-intercepts of a polynomial function is the same as that degree. If we start doing fractional exponents, we call these radical functions. Whenever you have a fractional exponent, the denominator is the index of the radical, and the numerator is still the exponent. So the square root of x could be written as x to the one-half, the cube root of x could be x to the one-third, and the fifth root of x squared would be x to the two-fifths. So up to now, we've been working with x to some exponent. What if we go crazy and put x in the exponent? This is called an exponential function. And this is where exponential growth or decay comes from. So we can solve for x in exponential equations too, but it requires an inverse process. This is the reason that we created logarithms. The whole goal of a logarithm is to get the variable out of the exponent. Here's a pretty solid way to think of logarithms. And for practical purposes, logarithms have a lot of properties. Using these properties, we can expand logarithms, we can condense logarithms, we can solve them in our head. But ultimately, all this training for logarithms is meant to prepare us for the main event. Anytime we need to solve an equation where the variable is in an exponent. And this concludes the highlights from Algebra 2 first semester. How exciting.